So, I wasn't going to do a video today, but I think after last night's Cab Franc Taste Off, updating on the Giberto from some more Central Loire deserves an update. So that wine absolutely got better over the night as it aerated. And today I'm just going to have the rest. I'm, I'm decanting it. I'm going to drink it over the course of the next few hours, but it's... Last night in the glass, I just let it sit for about an hour, hour and a half, and it just got better. It's 12.5%, which in this day and age is such a low ABV, which I think why with slightly higher ABV ones, I thought those were extremely higher, a lot higher, but the Working Dog and Sean Thackeray's Cab Franc, but it, I think I did a slight disservice to this wine. I think this is absolutely a 4.5 out of 5, so I upgraded the score. Not that it matters all that much, it's how much that you enjoy it, but it it really is an amazing Cap Franc. Uh, one of the best I've probably ever had, and, I, and I'm not even sure on the price. I think it's a little more than I had said yesterday, but it doesn't really matter. Very difficult to find. And it absolutely has that, that French Bordeaux scorched earth aroma and a little bit on the palate. And then some of this dusty cherry. I didn't say it yesterday. Cap Franc sometimes has this dusty cherry component to it, to me. A gritty cherry kind of component when I have it. And I absolutely love it. I think Cap Franc is really great. Cap Franc being the parent, one of the parents to Cab Sauve. So Cab Sauve is Cab Franc and Sauvignon Blanc together. And they made Cab Sauve out of it. You know, it's the most desired grape in the world. There's a uh, raspberry liqueur aroma to it as well, like a Chambord aroma, slightly, slightly. So, before I even take my first sip, I want to talk about some other wines I'd like to try in sort of the near future. I don't talk enough about Washington State being a great producer of wine, especially red wine. I haven't had a whole heck of a lot of whites out of Washington State. I've had more at Oregon, Chardonnays, Pinot Gris, and they're all great, sort of Burgundian-esque, or they try to be. But Washington State for reds, Walla Walla, Yakima Valley, uh, other areas, Columbia Valley, uh, red, uh, I forget all the APAs up in Washington, but... Most of the cabs and cab lines are fantastic, especially if you spend a few extra bucks. You don't have to go too, too far up to get some really, really, really high quality wine. The Pirouette, the 2016 one I bought a case of, was about 40-ish 40 40 bucks, and it tasted to me like a, a $90 wine, $80 wine, easily. Just amazing. I have one left. I'm so upset I kind of ripped through them. But I want to get another wine from it. They're called Pursue by Bear. Made. Uh, there's a actor, the Kyle McLaughlin, or I forget his full name. I can't even tell you what he's actually in. He's not some type of A or B actor, but somewhere along the line he was in Hollywood and he's got his name and there's this wine called Pursue by Bear up in, up in Washington and it gets some pretty good reviews for sort of a celebrity wine, but it's not really a celebrity wine. He has a legit winemaker and everything else that goes with it and I think the wine's about 60 to 70 and I'd like to try that in sort of the near future. And that's not inexpensive, but I expect really great things out of it. Paso Robles is a region, and, and I used to have try more wines out of that region, out of California. It's a warmer region. You sometimes get some more bargain cabs. Sometimes I felt like the Cabernets were a little bit too overcooked. So when you overcook Cabernet, you kind of, I feel like you get some green notes to it, some vegetal. I don't want a burnt fruit. I don't mind scorched earth, an earthy component, but I don't want a burnt fruit component to my wine. I'm going to try some more from Paso Robles. I have not had a Paso Robles wine in a while. I think a Sasolis is from Paso Robles, that, uh, that winery that makes a Sasolis and a few other wines that I've had, and those are pretty good. So, The other areas, I'd, I'd like to get a little smarter in Burgundy. Now, I've always liked Pinot Noir, but I think I'm starting to like it more and more for its elegance, uh, for its food pairing, for its acidity. I think I'm starting to just enjoy and appreciate some higher acid wines, and Pinot Noir is no 
uh, no slouch to some having some acid, especially from cooler regions. So from Burgundy, there's one of my favorite regions is Volnay, which is in the Cote de Bone, the southern part of the Cote d'Or, Cote de Nuit is the north, which is more known for red. But also in the south is Pomard. And Pomard's supposed to make some bigger, bolder Pinots out of Cote de Bone. I can't say I've had too many Pomards. I, I don't have the flavor and taste profile for all the various villages. I'd like to start accumulating that over time, learn what Volnay does, Pomard does. And of course, within those, then you have those vi those vineyards. So being in Von Romani, and then if you're in the right place and you get a Domaine de Romani Conti, and you're talking about $15,000 wine versus maybe a $100 wine, a few vineyards over. And we're talking vineyards, not even villages. It's the same village, and then you could be 10 rows over, and the wine is thousands of dollars less for whatever reason. It's just how it works out in Burgundy. And maybe I'm exaggerating that it's 10 rows over, but they, they are very specific in that way. The plots are very important. The vineyards are very important. That's how you get a Grand Cru vineyard in Burgundy and a Premier Cru vineyard. And I've said it, you don't need to know anything about Burgundy. Premier Cru or Grand Cru, you know you're going to get a high quality, well-made Pinot Noir, but you're going to pay for it. There is a price to pay for that. And the other island in Cote de Nuit, the northern is a Gevry Chambertin, so another village. And certainly they have some Grand Cru. Oh, so in Pomard and Volnay, there are no Grand Cru vineyards, but they're Premier Cru. Some villages don't have a Grand Cru vineyard, they just don't. Gevry Chambertin absolutely does, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the sort of the village, Gevry Chambertin. I had it in 2005, many, many moons ago, and it was unbelievably good. Again, it's supposed to be a fuller-bodied Pinot Noir, if I can imagine that, but I'm sure with the French and Burgundian elegance to it. So I'm going to start with those two, Pomard and Gevry Chambertin, and see what I get. I know what I get out of Volnay, and I absolutely love it. And I think Volnay, to me, is a little bit fuller-bodied, but it, it's, it reads in the texts as a place of more finesse and elegance, maybe some of the ones I've had, but I do agree with that. The Volnays with aeration, with decanting, are absolutely amazing. I've had a number of them in the last 12 months, and they've all been a some of my favorite Pinot Noirs I've ever had in my life. Recently had a Pinot Noir that bought from Finger Lakes. It was absolutely amazing. Makushla from Heart and Hands Winery up there. Great, great city. Lighter than you would think, but the best Pinot Noir from the Finger Lakes that I had tried. And really great. Almost crave, crave worthy. It's really a great high acid Pinot that could go the distance and just... It opened up as the night went on, and it was it was fantastic. So, those are some of the things I want to sort of pursue in the next six to twelve months. Let's just say, let's be liberal in the time frame here. It is summertime, so get into a few rosés. Possibly rosés aren't my favorite or my drink of choice. I think I'm going to probably go gravitate a little bit more to some sparklers this summer rather than to. To rosés. I have no problem with a rosé sparkler, but I think I just don't love rosés. And I've had a number of them. I've had even some of the best ones from Domaine Tempier, and I think they're fine, and they're good. They're just never great to me. I almost prefer white, most definitely sparkling, and or red. I, I'll even take the orange. I, I'm starting to get a little fond of this funky orange wine extended skin to contact, but rosé? Just... Not that they're bad, not that I dislike them. It's not a dislike, just a preference to other things. So, pretty sure he's a natural wine maker. So natural wine movement being a big, big thing. And this wine for 12 and a half has just an, a lot of character. And as it opened up, I, I get more on the palate. It has some baking spice, it has some raspberry puree, it's it's finessed and elegant for a Cab Franc, but still has body and texture and length and acid. It's making my mouth water as well as, and it's the, the, the tannin levels is, is lower than the other two for sure, but it it's just stylistically different than those, but it's amazing in its own right. I would say 
This is probably definitely more age worthy than the Retriever. The Sean Thackeray Kevron is already 11 years old, and that's amazing, but different stylistically. A little bit bigger and bolder, more ripe. More ripe is what I'd say. But this, this is, this is great. This is unbelievably good. I mean, you, salmon, pork. You could go with red meat here. Maybe a gamey meat. I'd go with a gamey meat. A quail, a lamb. Yeah, with lamb, I go with other things. I'd say something like quail or or rabbit, or maybe a stew. I think this would be unbelievable. The acidity, too, is, is awesome. I had this with cheese last night, and it, it shined with the cheese. Absolutely. Well, H. Tavardi. I think I have another bottle of this. I'm going to do my best to let it sit in the cellar and just forget about it, because I'd like to try this in five years. I'd love to see where this wine ends up. See, it's making my mouth water. There's this awesome acidity, and this wine only gets better with some, some decanting. And I think it'll absolutely get better with, with age. So, 11 minute update for a video I didn't even want to do, but that's it. We're gonna have some dinner. We talked about the wines, and we'll see what the week and the weekend brings, and what we talk about next week. Have a good night.